Welcome to this week's episode of the Success Realtor Podcast by yours truly, Colleen Wood. Here is where we celebrate success in real estate and share the wisdom and struggles so that others can be successful too. If you are a new listener, I am the producing branch manager of the Wood Team at Hometown Lenders, and I am known for helping realtors make a lot more money in commissions without selling their soul to the industry and while maintaining balance with what's really important in life. Today, we are talking to my friend and social media goddess, Leland Reed, realtor with Engel and Volker's Western Frontier out of Missoula, Montana. Leland, I am so excited to talk to you today. I know. I am so honored. I just want, I wish we were like next to each other though. I know. Because followers, I love Colleen Wood. She is my girl. And I'm so excited to be here and so honored that you asked me to do this again. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes, you are a repeat guest on a podcast. We had a previous podcast called Leading Ladies of Montana Real Estate, and we've just decided to expand into other corners and include some more states and include those guys in here, too. So thought that this would be a fun way to start 2023, and I couldn't think of a better guest. So thank you so much for joining me again. Love it. I just love you. I just love you. I love you. I love you. You are my girl. So Leland, tell me a little bit about your 2022 Would you share with us what you did in volume and units? You had a fantastic year when other people were really struggling. Yeah, I really appreciate that. And full disclosure, I purposely did not read any of your questions that were sent to me because I really like to speak from the heart. So this is totally not scripted. It is on your interview, Colleen. It's just totally organic. And that's one thing I pride myself on. So let's go. So yeah, so 2022. That's a mouthful. And it was a mouthful of a year. It was an incredible year in Montana real estate. I think everybody felt the effects of COVID and people moving from out of state and have this show here, which I'm sure a lot of you watch it called Yellowstone, which is about an hour from Missoula, about an hour and a half, two hours from Missoula. So it really, really brought an influx of -of out-of-state buyers. And last year, I have a couple accolades, but last year I sold just over $33 million in sales, which is like, dang, girl. I have to be honest with you. I did not know that because I don't keep track of my numbers. I'm one of those people. I'm sure I'm like that 1%. Mm -hmm. I don't keep track of my numbers. And when I pulled it up at our last office meeting in December, I like had no idea that I had sold that much. So big testament to don't put too much pressure on yourself. The numbers come, it will happen organically. um, And I'm just so proud of those numbers. Yeah, you should be. And you have tremendous numbers, yet you are so humble. When I learned that about you, that you are not a competitive person, that you just kind of do your own thing and have your own branding and just work really hard and you get what you get out of that and you're happy with that, you're graceful with that, that sets you at a higher bar than you were before for me. So I respect that so much. Colleen, are you competitive, would you say? I'm not competitive with other lenders. I'm competitive with myself. I know where I need to be in order to hit the goals that I have. So in that aspect, I do watch my numbers more than I think that you do. But, you know, I know where I've got to be. So you have a team to take care of and your role is totally different than mine. So that would make complete sense. Okay. well, I appreciate that. Tell me for our listeners who don't know you. Number one, I do want to share that your Instagram profile name is Montana Dream Home which I don't know how you got so lucky getting that one, but I don't know how that one was possibly available. But if you guys, when you are done with this podcast, you are going to want to go follow Leland on Instagram, everywhere that she is socially. She has an absolutely incredible social media presence. So give us just a little introduction about who you are, how you got started in real estate, family, that sort of thing. Yeah, do we have all day? So I'm obviously Leland Reed. Colleen is making me blush over here. But I actually was born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. I've lived in Chicago, New York, Alaska. And then now I call Montana home. This is where I raised my family. My family has a fifth generation ranch here. And my husband did his undergrad here. And so long story short, we really want to get back here. And we feel super, super grateful that we live in such a magical place where our boys can just go out the backyard and they have a full playground of adventure. It's pretty spectacular to live here. 
I have been in real estate for only four years. I just came up on my four-year anniversary. I know it's so crazy. That is insane. I know. It's so crazy. It really flew by. I'd say the first two years did not fly by, but then the last two, like really, I just, it's amazing. And I am a wife. My husband and I also, as long as real estate, we own my husband's medical practice, which is Western Montana Foot and Ankle in town. My husband is an incredible angler and physician. And we have two beautiful boys who are 12 and nine that literally just are wild and crazy. And oh my gosh, boys, the boy energy. What do you get it, Colleen? Yes. The boy energy is a whole different level. But I started in real estate four years ago. I was totally, this sounds like so cheesy and cliche, but I was like totally the little girl that would like ride her bike around neighborhoods at night when it was dark and lights are on so I could like look into people's homes. So I really felt a connection with architecture and people in general, I think, throughout my life. And long story short, the owner of my company, she approached me when she was actually listing my house and said, if you have a job, you'd be great at this. And so after I was done breastfeeding and babies started going off to school and I didn't want to run my husband's medical practice anymore because that's a whole different job. I was like, I'm going to give this real estate thing a shot. And I dove right in, walked in the doors the first day and I had no idea what I was doing that made it work. I love that. I love that about that. So, OK, so first off, you touched on it and I don't want to lose track of what you said on this. So I'm going to kind of go off my script here and ask you. What is it with the show Yellowstone, which is like the elephant in the room here in Montana? We have to talk about Yellowstone because it has such a huge following nationwide, I think worldwide. Oh, my. Yeah. Are so attracted to this lifestyle. And you and I both know that the lifestyle is a little manufactured. You can find that lifestyle, but it's not, you can you know, it's it. not 99% of the lifestyle in Montana. But what is it that you think that people are coming to Montana when they have this Yellowstone dream? What are they looking for? Okay, so full disclosure, I've never watched the show. Oh, watched like a little bit of it. And then I don't, I'm not a huge TV person. Same. Uh, Yeah, but I think, well, I'll speak from how it happened with me. And I feel like a lot of people feel this way. Montana is the last best place. I mean, it is that state that everybody always thinks of, like, It's not quite Alaska, so you're not like the last frontier, super duper rugged. It's still in the lower 48. We have all the modern amenities here that all other states have, except we have this like incredible topography. We have beautiful housing. The University of Montana is in Missoula and the Montana State. Montana State is in Bozeman. Um, We have Big Sky Ski Resort here, which has become the next veil, I guess, or Deer Valley of Utah. Uh, And so I think the show definitely helped. And I know Montana has been on a couple different other reality shows and stuff like that. But I think seeing, first of all, what you can get here price point, Mm -hmm. um, that whole, I mean, I've lived in big cities, that whole idea of just opening your door to fresh mountain air Mm -hmm. and really living in God's country, not from a religious standpoint, just saying like really living in this like beautiful, beautiful place that is so photographic anywhere you go. I mean, it truly is. Every Um, corner. Mm -hmm. Every corner. Yeah. Uh, It never gets old. And one thing I love about selling real estate here is that all of our listings have windows, most of them. And the views that are in our houses are the art. And every single view changes every single day. Daily, it changes. And I think that's one thing that really attracts people to it. Yes. Another Willem Volker's agent, Pollyanna Snyder out of Bozeman, who's a dear friend of ours, you know, she was using in marketing and I'm not sure if it's her marketing or not, but it was the slogan space, the new luxury. And it really, man, that really resonates with everything that we've gone through in the last couple of years, people needing to have kind of their own space. And then, of course, the space that Montana offers. All right. Diving into beautiful things that you're talking about. I want to talk about your beautiful social media presence. You have a humongous Instagram following. I had to go and look. You have 11.8 thousand followers. That's a lot of people. Like that is huge. Your content is gorgeous and fun 
And yet it sells your listings like very few people are doing that level of showings of their listings. And you do it for every price point. It's not just something you do for a luxury. You don't promote yourself as just a luxury agent. You do every single price point. You treat them all the same. What do you prioritize when you're creating your content? Do you post with a plan? Do you have a marketing calendar or is your stuff off the cuff? So I really take pride in my social media because it is completely my creative outlet. Thank you. It wasn't at the beginning, but I actually taught a social media class in our office this past week. And one thing that really stuck with everybody is that it should be an integral part of your day. Because we live in a millennial generation, we live in, what is it, Gen Z now? I can't keep track of all of them. I have no idea. But most likely buyers, you know, and sellers, before they even like call somebody, they're looking online, they're vetting agents, they're seeing, you know, who's out there. Because we live in a social media world. I think that's how we met. Mm -hmm. Uh, It is. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, it is how we met. So to answer your question, and I've met an incredible amount of people that I call dear, dear friends. 50% of my business, I would say, is from social media, which is really crazy. And it all started, I was first an agent. Social media with real estate, there was definitely a connection to it, but not really here, I felt like, in Montana. So I always try to separate myself from what everybody's doing. And I just turned on that camera on my little iPhone, and I just started talking and talking and The first 10, 20 videos were awful and we can get into that because I was so like nervous of what people thought or, you know, is someone going to look at me? And, you know, I mean, there's a lot of anxiety behind social media, especially Mm -hmm. when you're models all the time and all these filters, which I have a filter on my Instagram right now. Um, But, you know, I think the one thing about social media is that it is in our world right now, whether you like it or not, it should be an integral part of your business, even if you're not in real estate. And my posting, I definitely have a system, but it's kind of all up here. It's not written down. I always start Mondays with a quote that has inspired me. How many times do you look through social media? You know, you're scrolling through and then you see this amazing saying that just kind of sticks with you for the day. So I always start my Mondays with that. And that kind of kicks it off. Do have a little bit of a schedule, but also like there's some days where I post three things and there's some days where I post nothing. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I'm really big into stories. I go on every single day and I talk about my day. You know, I get negative feedback too. One lady DM me and said, You talk about yourself too much. And I'm like, Okay, that's Mm -hmm. bad for you. Um, What else are you supposed to talk about? This is Right. I talk about myself too much, which is fine. People are going to feel that way. But I also feel like people want to feel a connection with you and you yeah. link and anybody else that they're listening to. So I can get on and be as personable as I can. And just like this morning, I was putting on my lipstick in the car and I was like, oh, hold on, I'll talk in a second because this is not going well. So <laughs> I think people just want to see the day to day. I think they want to feel a connection. And I think that's why my social media presence has been so successful. Yeah. And you intermix both business and personal. That's a big deal. And I'll tell you that I struggle with the personal part. And you are so brave how you bring in your kids and your horses and your not as beautiful portions of your life that you go right ahead and share with people. How did you feel comfortable opening your personal life onto social? I know it's not for everybody. I wear my heart on my sleeve. You know, people, you know, think of me like, oh, she's married to a doctor. Oh, she's a successful real estate agent. I came from a single mom. I came from nothing. I mean, we won't go down that rabbit hole so we don't have tears because I think the last time we did this, we had tears. (laughs) I'm sure. But I really feel like this job is all about connections and being authentic. And, you know, I know out there that I am not going to be for somebody, you know, and that's okay. But I really feel like when somebody's scrolling through or following a real estate broker or advisor, they don't only want to see just like sold in a contract. But yeah, it gets it's very so boring. Repetitive, right? It's very yeah. boring. Uh, and I really am comfortable in front of the camera. And I really, really do. Even though I can't see anybody on the other end, I know that I'm connecting with people. It's like this weird psychology. I mean, and I like people to see my life. Montana is so beautiful and I love to show it from just your normal girl with the blonde bob who's a real estate advisor, really what my life is like out here. Mm -hmm. I love it. 
So Facebook or Instagram, and have you jumped into, oh my gosh, I'm having a brain freeze. TikTok. TikTok, because I'm not on TikTok. (laughs) Have you jumped into TikTok? Do you have a preference of platform? And if you could post to one, what would it be and why? Okay, so that's a really, really good question. And I feel very passionate about this. So just like MySpace, space, remember MySpace? Mm-hmm. MySpace, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Okay. So right now, I 100% believe that if you are going to post on one thing, which I'll get into, you can actually post on two at the same time. Instagram is where I feel the most connected to my audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like what they have as far as tools goes, And then also anything that you can post to Instagram, you can just feed it onto your Facebook. I have a lot of followers or friends on Facebook, but Instagram, I want the outside world, the people that don't know me to get to know me. And I feel like that really is the best platform for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really believe in Instagram because it's helped grow my business so much. And I think Instagram is going to be around forever. I just really do. It's such a smart concept. TikTok. I've dove in a little bit. You know, I've used it for like, uploading photos and stuff like that i'm still like trying to figure it out i love watching tiktok at night like i'll scroll through and it's like all, why they call it tiktok tiktok it's all horse videos of all course. horse videos yep. it, yeah all uh but it's really relaxing but do i see myself being this like big tiktok star no and i really have no no desire to. One girl in my office is doing a really good job with it and she's kind of starting to pick up her business that way. And I think that's great. But I think Instagram and TikTok, even though TikTok is the newest of the new, I think they're pretty parallel. Well, and so much of what your branding is, is so very visual that I think just the Instagram platform, it just really, really highlights what it is you're trying to do. You don't come in your content with a lot of like thought provoking statements. It's more look at this beautiful home and the views. And so it is so very visual for your branding. So I think you're spot on and you're right. Yes, you can simultaneously post to Facebook and Instagram. So how have you attracted so many followers? Are they 100% organic or have you done anything to increase your follower number? Yeah. So I could go down a rabbit hole with this. In the beginning, very organic. But then I got into social media hashtags, which are also an integral part of using the the program. And I started out, I followed a lot of people. I took a lot of time like to make a presence comment. And all of a sudden I started getting more followers. There's also other ways to gain followers. And that is a whole different class and conversation. And I'm happy to jump on and talk about that with you anytime. Um, But, you know, I think to organically grow, you have to be out there and you have to put yourself out there. You're not going to all of a sudden have all these followers if you're not posting every day, posting content, posting content of your horse or your dog or whatever, capturing those followers. So it's a slow process. I had my Instagram account for four years and I've really seen a growth this year. Wow, 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 wow. Because a lot of people will end up buying followers, you know, and doing things like, you know, they'll do contests or whatever, tag somebody, blah, blah, blah. I really need to learn from you about the hashtags and how to use them. I don't think I do them well. But here's a question for you, too. Have you ever had anyone else manage your social media account or do you do it all yourself? Never, ever. It's all me. I am 100% the person behind the camera. And I think that is like, I know it's not for everybody, right? I know everybody, like, it's a learning curve. Or some brokers don't have time for it because they're selling $200 million a year or whatever. But I do feel like if I had somebody else do it, it would kind of be cheating the system, you know? So I really am the person. They're my fingers posting everything. And I think that's what makes it so successful. And that's what makes it so special is that I think people can really see that it is me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I can feel your mood. I can feel your intention behind all of your posts. I was going to say, if you have somebody doing it for you, they're doing a phenomenal job, but even better done by yourself. Okay, so some of your posts, you video yourself where you are holding your phone or do use a selfie stick of some sort? Nope. I just hold my phone just like this. Okay. Okay. So you hold your phone. So some of you, look at you, 
So some of them you video yourself and some of them you have brought in a videographer. I've noticed recently that you've had somebody doing some of your videoing for you. When do you decide to do each type? Is there a rhythm there? And then are you using a filter, which you commented a little bit on that? Yeah. So on my Instagram, I pretty much always have a filter on. Again, it's a creative outlet for me. And trust me, there are days where I look haggard. And although I can totally go on for who I am, I think another thing that makes it interesting is that you kind of can change things. You can change lighting. You can change, you know, your eyes to look bigger. You can have mascara put on, whatever the case might be. Right now, I don't have a filter on uh, on this Zoom call. But there's so many things that you can do that, you know, just to keep it interesting, keep your followers engaged. So, yeah. Well, and so, but when you're doing the listing videos, are you now 100% using a videographer to help you with those listing videos? They've really, really increased in quality. Yeah, thanks for noticing. So I've been using a photographer who actually is pretty new in the industry, and I always like to give the new people a chance because they're, nice. they're the ones that I feel like are open to feedback. And I really collaborated with him, and I said, okay, a lot of people aren't doing this, like these reels and these like really quick walkthroughs and stuff like that. They're doing them in like LA and New York and bigger cities. We obviously don't have the technology or we have the technology in Montana. We just don't have like, like our people are just kind of starting to learn how to do that. So yep. I hyped them and I said, hey, why don't we add on like a social media package to your branding and get that rolling? And so I'm very picky. So when he comes in, I kind of give him direction. He's also very artsy. So he gives me direction. And yeah, our one minute videos are super fun. They take like 20 minutes to do. They're very affordable. And I get so much good feedback from them because they're quick. They're to the point. They show the house. They see somebody walking through the house and boom, done. The house is for me or the house is out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that it's really encouraging for somebody wanting to sell a property to see you doing videos like that because nobody else is doing them like that. And it is so classy. It is so classy. And I'm sure it's oh. increased your number and quality of listings that you've gotten because of the presence that you've had. Okay. So if you were to start your social media presence all over again today, what steps would you take over the next 30 days to get there? Oh my gosh. I wish I could have told my, how old was I? 30 something. So, you know, just to open up your camera and just be yourself. And talk about it. the first 10 videos I did, I would like delete them. Oh, I didn't like the way I looked. And oh, I stumbled on a word. Now I 99.9% .9 of the time don't even delete or reshoot. I just talk it. I talk in the camera and I press send because we're humans. We're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes. Nobody wants to work with somebody that's action. People want to see flaws. They want to see you mess up a little bit. Also, it makes good content funny. Mm -hmm. uh, but that would probably be my biggest advice. And to out of the gates, start and stick with it. Mm -hmm. Don't take a two month break or a year break. Like jump in there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't think there were stories back then. I don't think there were. But just that would be my biggest advice. Someone is going to love you and someone is going to hate you. And there's going to be more people that love you. And those people that love you are going to stick with you and they're going to be your tribe. Mm -hmm. And whoever unfriends you or unfollows you or whatever, just ignore it. I think something that I've noticed a lot because I've done kind of a deep dive into social media content and just for my own use is like what you were saying. Don't try to make it too perfect, because if you make it too perfect and too beautiful, you actually push away a large amount of your audience who thinks that they are not your type of client. And yeah. that they're imperfect. So right. your imper imperfection draws more people. Yeah, because we're not perfect. And you know what? I might meet that person in person mm -hmm. and I'll be like, oh, my gosh, she is not who I thought she was because she was different on social media. So I really want people that feel my energy in person to really connect with how it is on social media. That's awesome. What do you think is your unique skill? That's helped you to be so successful, Leland. Wow. When I walked in the doors, these doors right here, for the first time ever, I had no idea what I was doing. And you, a lot of people think real estate is so easy, right? Mm -hmm. And they like, oh, Leland, this successful, I can do it. I was a hustler. I re 
realized very quickly, no one is going to give me business. No one's just going to hand things, give me million dollars things. No one is going to, you know, teach me this and that unless I ask a question. So I just hustled and I got out there. I really connected with my community and I started reaching out to my realm of acquaintances, people, friends, whoever. And long story short, like I would say this is the first year. Last year was an incredible year. I would say last year was the first year where I was like, oh, my gosh, like I've never bought into a lead system ever, never bought into a lead system. And that's something else I take pride in. But I think just being relatable, authentic, you have to be good with people in this industry. You have to kind of know how to switch your tone. Like if you meet with a client that's like super hyper and super uppity, you know, you feed off their energy. If you meet with a client that is like, you know, has just lost a loved one, you know, you deal with this. You have to kind of take it down a notch. So really just kind of the psychology behind you know, when somebody's sitting next to you, just feeling energies. But I think being authentic, and I'm damn good at my job. I'm really good at negotiating the paperwork, all that stuff. I take a lot of pride in that. Mm -hmm. But let's go back to what I said in the beginning. You have to be authentic with you and you have to be a good agent. And not only are we advisors, but we're friends and we're mentors. It's not glamorous. We help people through death, divorces, estates, like 90% of it is not glamorous. There's the 10% of it where you get a call from a cash buyer saying they want to buy a $3 million property, but that's very rare. It takes a lot of grit and grace. And that is my motto for life for sure. Oh my gosh, girlfriend. That was such great content for our listeners. Thank you so much for saying all of that. I just want to just feed off of you and say, that sometimes like on my side of it, the lending side of it, you guys are so lucky because you get to meet people face to face and you get to see who they really are. Your relationships are a lot longer. You know, sometimes you're looking for property with people for a couple of years. And so it's a longstanding relationship. And on our side of it, almost all of it, I would say 100% of the time is over the phone. And so we're reading nuances and intention and what people need and any sort of apprehension that they have we're reading it just by voice and so it is such a people skill on all of it where we have to really be able to read people quickly get a read off of them and then adjust just like you're saying i mean i had a client yesterday she's going through a dreadful divorce and she's got a little guy and it's very quiet that it's happening and so we have to move quickly and do the things that we need to do for her but that's a completely different sell right Yeah, Yeah, it totally is. And I was going to add to what you were saying. I think also, too, people want to feel taken care of. Mm -hmm. Uh, Are in the service industry. And so what kind of service do people want to feel? They want to feel taken care of. Their voices want to feel heard. You know, they want to collaborate. They want to have some say. You know, I am not the type of advisor to go into a listing appointment and be like, me, 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 me. I'm always right. like, what can I do for you? I know I'm going to get this listing. I know that I'm going to sell the property for you. But what do you need out of me? And 90% of the time, I have clients that, you know, text me 15 times a day, like literally. And then I have the clients that text me, you know, maybe every other day, like, how's it going? But um, just giving them that attention that they need, I think, is really important. And make sure it comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. That's customer service at its highest level, taking care of people and getting them what they need. Okay. Our last question to wrap up, I think it's a compelling question. What consumes your thoughts on a daily basis? What, What are you thinking about, fearing, fretting, excited about? What's going through Leland Reed's mind every single day? Well, I'm about to be really authentic, especially for all the listeners out there. I, just like 90% of our world, struggle with anxiety. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm raising two children. I have a horse. My husband and I own a medical practice. Um, I have this big real estate empire that I'm trying to build. So what consumes me every day in 2023 is balance. I really, really try to have a balanced life and day every single day. I try to make sure that my meals are prepped. My kids get one-on-one time. And it's really hard to do. It's not perfect. And it never will be perfect. My horse gets ridden. My husband feels loved. You know, my dogs get to go on walks. And then on top of all that, just the family stuff, my clients feel the same way. They feel taken care of. They feel 
you know, like I'm doing a good job for them. So what consumes me every day is to have a handle on my anxiety because it's a lot to be in this industry and it's a lot to be a mom. And it's a lot to live in a millennial generation where everything is so fast paced and the American dream is money, 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 money. So I would just say right now, deep breaths, balance. I'm trying to get more organized. It's not one of my strong suits. And making sure I have a good night's sleep every single night Mm -hmm. uh, is also really critical. And also, Colleen, I'm sure you can relate to this. You have to be having you time. And so if you are a listener and you are a newer agent, or maybe you're an, a seasoned agent and you're not good at this, boundaries with yourself, even with your family and with your clients is so important. You have to have downtime, whether that's taking a nap every day, riding your horse, going for a hike, whatever that might be, you have to have that every single day. I'm like mental health is such an integral part of life in general. Yeah. We pour into people all day. Literally, this is a 24 hour a day, seven day a week, 365 days out of the year business. Um, it is. I, I know. Know. 70 hours a week. Yeah. I know you're the same as me that we're talking to people late at night, early in the morning and on Thanksgiving every year. People buy property on Thanksgiving every year. I wrote three offers on Christmas Eve. Yeah. Yeah. I, Thanksgiving, Christmas, it's just people, especially when they get together with people, they start thinking about the things that they want to do and talking about it. And they have a little vacation time. It happens every year and it's awesome. But if you are responding from a place of feeling violated, you will change. Like I remember when I first started feeling like, oh, why would they call me now? You know, and just feeling yeah. that. And I know that energy pushed people away. And so you have to decide, do you want it or don't you? is really resonating with me right now when I'm feeling anxious and I'm not getting enough time for myself or I don't feel like I'm you know giving enough time to my family as soon as that client calls like hey I'm all about being authentic and I know everybody out there feels the same way you get like that like why are they calling yeah. but you have a day-to-day -day life where you can really have boundaries every time the phone rings you'll be like Hi, this is Leland with Angle and Volker. How can I help you? I'm so happy to help you because I've already had some time for myself today and my kids got off to school today. It's not perfect every day, trust me. It is, mental health is so important. I cannot stress that enough. So how do you fill your cup? Oh my gosh, so many ways. Well, I have this incredible horse that I feel so blessed to have. He is just like, the most amazing animal. And if you follow me on social media, you've probably seen him a bunch. So show season in the summer, I have three-day eventing. You know what also really fills my cup besides my horse, my family, and blah, blah, and we could go down the rabbit hole, but I love my bed. Uh -huh. Same, 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 same. I don't know who would actually admit that, but I love my bed. So mm -hmm. if I get home, let's say at five o'clock and the kids are like off, just sports or they're doing homework and they don't need my help I'll go in my room with my two dogs I'll let them on the bed Shh, they're not allowed on the bed but I let them on the bed we just like kind of sit there I open all the shade I look out and I just kind of get cozy and warm and yeah I take about 30 minutes I also hopefully this isn't a speech to say but I also take a bath every single night it's like a ritual for me if you're not a bath taker you should become one because it is such a stress reliever it is leland where can everyone follow you on social media well let's go out for drinks or let's go out for coffee sometime but my instagram handle is at montana dream home you'll see me on there every single day some days are glamorous and some days are not and if you are listening and you do hit follow send me a little dm that you listen in this morning so i can make sure you get a follow back that's awesome. That's awesome. I will. I look at your stuff every single day. You guys make sure that you put Leland in your life. Make sure that you're seeing her social content, even if it's just to give you a smile every day and see some really beautiful real estate, whether you're in the market or not, or if you're a realtor to give you great ideas about what you can do too. She's a phenomenal mentor in that. Leland, this was amazing. Thank Please. you so oh, much for the opportunity. I can't wait to see you. We're just going to have to make a whole day of it sometime. All right. That well, yes. Oh gosh, let's definitely do that. Let's trail ride. 
Then let's go have lunch and cocktails and let's do the whole thing. I'm so excited to do that. It's going to happen. I love you so much. You're such a dear, dear friend to me. And by the way, Colleen has taken out of that 30, over $33 million of sales last year, Colleen and the Wood team has taken care of many, many, many of my buyers, more than 50%. So this industry is a tribe industry. Not one person does it all. So I'm super grateful for your collaboration and support over the years. Well, I'm super grateful for your trust. Yeah, it's just the most important thing to me. This is a trust industry. This is a people industry and not just our clients. Because, you know, when you entrust me with your clients, you're entrusting me with the health and safety of your family, the welfare of your family. You know, you're giving me your paycheck and asking me to take care of it. And it's a big deal to me. So I love you so much. Thank you so much for joining me again. Thanks again for listening to this week's episode of the Success Realtor Podcast. Just as a reminder, I'm the producing branch manager of the Wood Team at Hometown Lenders. What we are known for are three things. Number one, we close on time. Number two, we keep our realtors in the sales seat at all times by keeping them updated on their current transactions. And number three, when you entrust us with a lead, we follow up on that lead until they buy, fly, or die. Leads are never lost to our lack of follow-up. Our number one priority is for you to earn more money in commissions so that you can improve the lives of your family, community, and in turn, our country. So can I count on you for that next buyer lead? I would love to work with you too. Also, if you are interested in being a guest on the podcast, please just reach out to my office. All right, we'll talk to you when you call in and we will see you on the next episode of the Success Realtor Podcast. Bye-bye.